Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Bushra Janaid, and I'm the Outreach and Development Manager at the Ontario Arts Council. Hi, everyone. My name is Thay, and I'm the Visual Arts Officer at the Ontario Arts Council. We're also joined by Emily Jeffers, Communications Coordinator, who will be collecting questions through the Q&A throughout the presentation. At the end, we'll try to get to as many questions as possible. There are also two ASL interpreters here with us today if you would like to make use of these services during the presentation. If you're not able to stick around for the full presentation today, please note that the session is being recorded and will be made available on OAC's YouTube page at a later date. Although we're gathering from many different locations and in the virtual space, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the land on which the Ontario Arts Council's main office is located. I invite you to reflect on your own location in the province with regard to the land and territory you find yourself on today. We would like to acknowledge the diversity of the first peoples of this area, known as Takaranto, and honor the stewardship of the Huron Wendat, the Iroquois Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home of many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We have a lot of ground to cover um, in this very short one and a half hour today, but we're hoping that at the end of this webinar, you'll know more about the Ontario Arts Council, what it does, how it supports artists, collectives and organizations, and a broader extent, uh, the cultural and economic vitality of Ontario as a whole. We'll also be covering some basics about the type of granting programs that OAC offers, who can apply, how applications are assessed, and how to submit an application and who you can contact for help. The Ontario Arts Council is an agency of the Government of Ontario's Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Cultural Industries and is the primary funder of arts in Ontario. The OAC was established in 1963 to foster the creation and production of art for the benefit of all Ontarians. In fiscal year 2019 and 2020, OAC invested $51.9 million through over 1,900 grants to Ontario-based individual artists and over 1,100 grants to organizations and communities across Ontario. Arts grants can have a tremendous impact on individuals in their artistic careers, but are also significant investment in the cultural and economic fabric of the province. So here we're showing you a few examples of people and projects that you may recognize. So on the upper left, Lido Pimenta, who received a music production grant to support the development of her album, Miss Columbia, which was nominated for a Grammy in 2020. Ennis Choi received a grant in 2006 to work on a script for a play called Kim's Convenience, which went from a theater production pictured here at Soul Pepper Theater to a beloved TV show. Irene Sankoff and David Hine also received a grant to develop a script for a musical called Come From Away, which went on to become a record-breaking Broadway hit. And also Michelle DeRosier received a grant in 2013 for an animated film called The Grandfather Drum, which was featured at the Sundance Film Festival in 2015. These projects have only, not only become tremendous successes, but also generated thousands of jobs, significant economic benefits, and elevated the profile of Ontario artists at home as well as abroad. But before these successes, um, these people were hardworking artists like many of you trying to figure out how to get their projects funded. That said, we'll move on to how to apply for Ontario Arts Council grants. Thank you, Faye. So the Ontario Arts Council provides grants to Ontario-based individual artists and arts professionals, ad hoc groups and collectives and organizations. A professional artist is defined by OAC as someone who has developed th skills through training or practice, 
uh, it are, is recognized by artists working in the same artistic tradition, has a history of public presentation or publication of their work, and seek payment of their work, and they also actively practice their art. We recognize that short breaks in artistic practice um, are, are sometimes necessary, and these are acceptable. Um, as well, uh, in ad hoc groups and collectives um, are supported through Ontario Arts Council, but they must have 50% 50, 50 of their members residing in Ontario, and they need to be comprised of at least two members who meet the eligibility cr criteria uh, for individuals who will be responsible for the administration of the grant on behalf of the ad hoc group or collective. And uh, they must not be a corporation and they must also be able to deposit a, a grant check in the name of the ad hoc group or collective. In terms of organizations, they must be not-for-profit incorporated in Ontario or federally, and they have to have a head office in Ontario. As well, they should be governed by a volunteer board of directors or an advisory board. And for for-profit for or magazine publishers, uh, they're also eligible for funding uh, in OAC's publishing programs. The Ontario Arts Council provides both project and operating grants. Project grants are one-time grants for specific activities. Project grants are available uh, to individual professional artists, ad hoc groups and collectives, and organizations depending on the program. Operating grants provide ongoing support for Ontario-based incorporated not-for-profit arts organizations and for certain for-profit book and magazine publishers. Organizations interested in the operating stream should read the guide to operating programs and then get in touch with the program officer for the operating program they're interested in to find out more about the intake process. OAC granting programs are organized under four funding streams creating and presenting, building audiences and markets, engaging communities and schools, and developing careers and art services. So if you want to create new work, for example, you would look at a program in the creating and presenting stream, or if you're leading an art project in school or community setting, you might look at a program under engaging communities and schools. So by creating and presenting, we are looking at grants, for example, to support making new work or showing it to an audience. Building audiences and market includes support for outreach, touring and collaboration projects. Developing skills and careers support training, mentorship and capacity building. And lastly, engaging communities and schools supports activities that offer opportunities for professional artists to connect with community members to express ideas, create together and make positive change in their lives. Granting programs are also organized by discipline. So OEC supports dance, theater, music, media arts, visual arts, literature, as well as multi and inter arts. There are a few different ways to find the type of grant that will support the project that you want to do or what your organization does. When you go to the OAC website at arts.on.ca, on the homepage, you'll see a search bar where you can type in a keyword and see what grants come up. Another way to explore OAC grants is through the menu at the top of the screen. Hover your mouse over the grants section and a more detailed menu will appear. Here we see links to pages where the grants are organized by funding stream, discipline, and priority group. You'll also see on the right-hand column that there are a few links that are particularly helpful for new applicants. If you click on New to OAC, it will take you to the General Grant Information section, which has a list of all the grant programs available by program or deadlines. There is also a helpful step-by-step -step guide, uh, which provides an overview on how to apply for grants. The website also includes information on results of past program deadlines or who received grants as well. You may be wondering what a pri priority group is. 
As part of our commitment to ensuring equitable access to funding for all Ontarians, the Ontario Arts Council has six established priority groups, which have been determined over time through consultation with the uh, community. At this time, the OAC uh, priority groups include Indigenous artists, artists of color, deaf artists and artists with disabilities, francophone artists, new generation artists who are between the age of 18 and 30, and artists located in regions outside of Toronto, and as well, organizations mandated to support these groups. These groups have a unique history, identity, and status in Canada. Some have faced historic inequalities and continue to face systemic barriers. So developing relationships with these groups is part of OAC's mandate to serve communities across Ontario. Before we dive into how to prepare an application, we'll give a brief overview of the application process and timeline. The first thing to know is that all applications are submitted and processed through NOVA, which is the Ontario Arts Council's online grant application system. To get to NOVA from the OAC website, click the big red button that says apply now, which is on all program web pages and the home page. Applicants who are deaf or who have a disability can request alternate, alternative formats and accommodations. You don't need to tell us what your disability is. You just have to identify the barrier to access and we can discuss alternative ways of submitting your application. Just be sure to let us know well in advance of the deadline since the deadline will still apply. You can find out more about these processes under the Access and Equity tab at the top of the home uh, homepage screen. You can also go directly to the URL grants.arts.on.ca or Google OAC NOVA to take you to the NOVA login page. So we won't have time today to do a complete overview of NOVA, but if you want to sign up for an account, click on the register here button if you have a grant history at the OAC, you can click Forgot Password and follow the prompts to set up your profile. If you work for an organization, you can create an organizational affiliation to your own personal profile. NOVA is set up for each contact to have one profile, even if you work for one or more organizations or have your own individual practice. Once you're in NOVA, you'll see a box that says funding opportunities with a list of project programs that are currently open for applications. Grant program eligibility criteria and application requirements vary. So click on the detail section for program guidelines, which has information that will be helpful to you to learn who is eligible for a particular program and what the program funds. Click on apply to start a draft application. If you're thinking of applying to a program, it's recommended that you open a draft application as soon as possible so that you could review the specific requirements for the program so that you can prepare all of the components. The application form also has writing tips, which may help you prepare your project description. Okay, so you have a, a program that you want to apply to and you're ready to start. How long will it take to find out if you got the grant? Applicants have two months to complete and submit their application. So if you go to the program page and see that the application deadline is October 1st, 2021, that means that the application for, uh, form itself will appear in NOVA about two months ahead of time. So around August the 1st. There's no pre-screening process to apply to OAC, so you can start your application right away and submit as soon as you're ready. In fact, we strongly encourage applicants not to wait until the deadline day to submit. Sometimes technical problems uh, pop up at the last minute or you find a mistake in your application that needs fixing. The worst thing is for your internet to crash or the server to become overloaded right at the deadline. Deadlines are at 1 p.m. and this is a strict deadline. Having a technical issue will not allow you to get an extension. OAC grants are competitive, so it's not a type of funding where you can, uh, you will, um, if you 
qualify, you're guaranteed uh, to receive a grant. So there are limited funds available. And unfortunately, the Ontario Arts Council receives far more applications than we're able to fund. To ensure that there is fairness in how funding decisions are made, the Ontario Arts Council uses a peer assessment process to allocate funding. Your application is read by other artists in your field. After the deadline, the program officer will read the applications and assemble a panel of assessors to read and, and score them. As assess an, an assessment panel takes place to discuss the applications, the assessors decide on the strongest, most viable applications and recommend them for funding. The Ontario Arts Council then confirms the grants and notifies all applicants about whether uh, they have received a grant. As you can see, the grant process takes time. Grants are not meant to provide immediate financial support. Grants support artistic activities and projects with specific goals. So you have to think about your application in terms of what you want the grant to do or what expenses will be covered by the grant. An important nuance in terms of uh, project expenses is that you're encouraged to pay yourself and other collaborators artist fees. Uh, for doing the project, but grants do not cover subsistence costs or living expenses like food and housing. So uh, to prepare your application, you're gonna want to find the, app, the program that will support the project or activity that you want to do. Then you ha have to read the program page thoroughly and paying uh, particular uh, attention to what the program funds and what it does not fund and the eligibility requirements. Start a draft application in NOVA and read through the application to understand the questions that you have to answer and the support documents and artistic examples that are required. If you have a disability or are deaf and need the help of a service provider to complete your application, you can make a request to the Ontario Arts Council to cover some of the expenses of having that person help you out. You can request up to $500 per OAC fiscal year to pay someone for their time. Contact the program administrator or officer uh, to make your request. This must be done six weeks ahead of the deadline. Anyone who's confused about the program requirements or is not sure about their eligibility can get in touch with program staff. Send us your questions by email or give us a call. The earlier the better so that we can have time to provide the information you need and that you have time to do your application. We receive a high volume of inquiries, so please do get in touch well before the deadline. Most project programs have four components. Application questions to describe your artistic context and project. They're word limits, so we suggest that you write clearly and concisely about what you want to do. It's always best to assume that assessors don't know you or your work, so plain language is preferred over jargon. We also ask for artistic examples of your past work. So this will vary within the programs that you're applying to. For example, visual artists programs will request images of your work or audio samples in a music project program. We ask for support documents, which may include resumes and in some programs, letters of confirmation or support. Only provide what is requested in the particular application. Some programs will also have a budget form to indicate your project expenses and revenues. So this can help you determine the grant amount you will request for the particular program. In some cases, it's a fixed grant amount. And in that case, um, your budget also helps assessors to understand where you intend to put the grant funds should you receive, um, should you receive support. We'll be providing grant writing tips later in our presentation. After a deadline passes, the program officer will review the applications submitted to ensure that they're eligible and also to get a sense of what kinds of projects um, are at the table for review to determine the appropriate expertise that will be required to assess these particular applications. 
The officer then pulls together a panel of assessors who are professional artists working in the same discipline to read and score the applications. The panel generally has a diverse makeup of assessors from different geographic regions, cultural groups, identity, and experiences. OAC looks at priority groups, not only in terms of who is applying to OAC, but who is represented on assessment panels. We work to ensure that our peer assessment processes across all funding programs include priority group artists, so that the process itself is representative of a diverse um, expertise and experiences in the field. Assessors are chosen from a large pool of individuals from arts communities all across Ontario. They're carefully screened and must comply with OAC's conflict of interest policy, ensuring that no decision is made where a direct conflict may exist. Assessors receive an orientation and an evaluation rubric for the program. They will review and score the applications and then participate in a panel discussion to make the final decisions about which projects are funded based on the available budget. Most project grant applications are assessed on artistic merit, impact, and viability. Each eligible application is scored by assessors using the evaluation rubric, and the rubric is also published on the program webpage so that applicants can review the information that assessors will be using and what they're looking for in reviewing each project. For each criterion, assessors will provide a score from one to five. These scores are then compiled and weighted, which produces a ranking of the applications received. In looking at artistic merit, assessors will be evaluating the artistic statement, the project description, as well as the artistic examples impact of the activity for the applicant is considered for the individual or organizations who applied, as well as for the communities and artists involved in your project. We also review viability um, in terms of information that you provide on your work plan and project budget. OEC receives many more applications than we're able to fund. There are lots of good projects that are put forward to assessment panels that may score well, but there happens to be more applications that score higher and these are funded first. This is why officers will often suggest to applicants who have been turned down to try again. It's really important not to take this as a reflection on the importance or the validity of your own work. Grant applicants are notified about the results of their application within four and a half months from the program deadline. When the assessment process is complete, you will receive an email telling you to check your NOVA account for your notification letter. If you're awarded a grant, you'll be asked to review the terms and conditions for accepting the grant and acknowledge the notification letter to indicate that you intend to move forward with your project following of which a check will be mailed to you. Recipients will have up to two years to complete your project and submit a final report about how you use the grant and how the project turned out. For individual applicants, you will also be asked to provide OE, um, your social insurance number to the OAC. For grants over $500, you will receive a T4A for the tax year in which you receive the grant and required to report this as income to Canada Revenue Agency. If you do not get a grant, and we know it's of course very disappointing, but take heart that this is an extremely competitive process. You can check your notification letter to see if feedback is offered for the particular program that you apply to. Often we're not able to provide specific feedback on each application, so the feedback may be quite general we encourage you to reapply. Um, you might find that your ideas and purpose have become clearer to you for the next deadline. And sometimes your ideas may simply resonate better with a different group of assessors. Thank you, Faye. So um, I'm gonna give some tips that may help you, that will help to make your application stronger. OAC grant applications uh, include writing tips to guide you in answering the questions that are being asked of you. 
but in general, we want you to tell us about yourself. How have you developed your art practice? Are you self-taught or have you been formally trained or a, com or, uh, a combination of both? Did you learn from elders? What have been some of your achievements or milestones along the way? Tell us about your background and how it may have influenced your work. For example, does where you live in the province influence the work that you do? Does your cultural background or identity influence your work or not? How does your work connect to OAC priority groups? Speak about what you've done to date towards your project. For example, if you're working on a play, what stage are you at? Talk about why you're pursuing this project and why it's significant to do to you. Has your career path been uh, disrupted by illness, caregiving or recent migration? Essentially tell us your story and use your authentic voice in the telling. Tell us about what you're planning to do and what you hope to achieve. Here, uh, we're looking for the uh, you to be clear and concise about the who, what, where, when, and why of your project. What are you planning to do? Are there collaborators on your project? Why have you chosen to work with them? What is their role? Are they confirmed? Will they be paid? Why um, have you chosen uh, to take, if you're taking training, like why have you chosen to take the specific training and what do you hope to gain from it? Or why are you conducting specific research uh, and what are you hoping to learn from it? How is this project going to lead you to the next stage of your career or help you achieve the short or long-term learning or other objectives you set for yourself? Where are you now and where do you hope to see yourself in the next year, two years, five years? Why is the project needed and why now? Where will the project take place? And what are the key steps or stages of your project? What is your project schedule or timeline? Make sure that you speak with any collaborators early, ask them for any required documentation such as letters of support or confirmation of participation as soon as possible. Make sure you have a common understanding of your specific roles and the project plans. Gather supporting documents such as CVs, artistic examples, etc. early on. Tell us about the impact you hope this activity will have on your arts practice or career in the short or long term. How will other co collaborators or stakeholders be impacted by your project, if relevant? How will your project impact you, your community, or audiences? Will what you're doing impact the broader community or audiences as well? Will your project impact any OAC priority groups, including perhaps yourself? And if so, which ones and how? Do you have support from other stakeholders on your project? For example, um, perhaps you have support from an, a for-profit or not-for-profit organization. Are they providing you with any, uh, uh, any in-kind support, such as the use of space or equipment or unpaid staff time? If so, you might want to mention, you would want to mention that and its, uh, and its value, but you don't include this in your, in your actual budget. Tell us about your project work plan. What are the start and end dates, dates of your activities? How many days or weeks or months does it entail? List your activities and tasks and where they will take place and over what period of time. And you wanna provide details about what will take place at each stage if you can. Tell us what you're gonna do if you don't receive all the funding you requested. Is your project plan scalable or you know, is it possible to, um, if the project has a couple or few components, what, are you gonna, what would your priority be? Uh, what will you do, uh, do to bring uh, you closer to achieving your goals? Are you in a position to contribute to the project funding yourself? If so, how much? Are you gonna do some kind of uh, crowdfunding or apply for other grants? And if you aren't able to uh, contribute to the project uh, or have access to other sources of funding, how will you continue to work towards your goals? And perhaps, you know, explain how you're gonna adapt your project plans um, if they're uh, disrupted by COVID. 
tell us how you determined your project expenses. How did you determine your fees? For example, if you're working with a mentor, ask them how much they charge. This will help determine how much of their time you can buy. Have you uh, used uh, industry rates, for example, um, Carfac, to help determine your fees? Have you done research to determine other project, what other project costs are? If you're taking courses or workshops, um, what, what do they cost? If your project expenses are more than what you could request in funding, how are you gonna make up the shortfall? Show us where the rest of the money is coming from. It's a good idea to include a detail, detailed budget notes that show how much you're paying yourself and any other artists, collaborators, mentors on your project. If you're taking a course or workshop, you know, what are the course registration fees? How much are you planning to rent a st uh, studio space, equipment, purchase software or materials, et cetera? You know, post pandemic, for example, how much are you gonna be paying for travel and accommodation? So budget notes are helpful in showing how uh, you've broken down your expenses. You're also going to want to provide support uh, materials. You provide letters of support from project collaborators or mentors outlining their role and how much they will be paid. An enthusiastic letter of support can go a long way and it may uh, be helpful to provide other, uh, other letters of reference or support um, from individuals who can speak directly to your art practice and experience. Provide artistic examples that are recent, that have been produced in the past two to five years, and explain how they're relevant in terms of what you're planning to do uh, with this particular project. If ne necessary, provide an artistic example from your mentor that will show how they connect to your project. Provide any letters of confirmation or information about enrollment from uh, the programs in, uh, that you're hoping to take. Tell the assessors why you have chosen these artistic examples and the space provided. If your support material is older or there have been gaps in your career, then it's important to explain why. Upload supporting documents and artistic examples well in advance to avo avoid last minute technical problems and save drafts as you work. In fact, submit early if you can. As we mentioned, uh, grant applications are assessed by a jury of your peers. So, you know, put yourself at the table. If, you're, if you were reviewing 150 applications, knowing that, you know, only, uh, 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 there's only adequate uh, support for a, enough funding to adequately support a third of them, why would you want to support a particular project? Taking into consideration the program objectives and criteria, is the application compelling, timely, realistic and achievable, well-researched and planned, and is it thoughtful? We also want to share some information with you on our accessibility support. If you have a disability or are deaf and are getting assistance from a service provider to help you complete your application, you can apply for application support the service provider does not need to be a professional grant writer, but they should be able to accurately convey what you want to do with your project in your application. We also have project support, which covers the cost of expenses that deaf and disability identifying applicants require in order to remove accessibility barriers in carrying out your project after you receive a grant. This grant will provide up to a maximum of $5,000 towards accessibility costs incurred during a project. These costs could include but are not limited to sign language interpretation, communication supports, transportation, equipment rental, attendant care. Um, this expense is um, put together in an application that is reviewed by a committee of deaf artists and artists with disabilities. Deaf artists and artists with disabilities include individuals who have physical, mental, or learning conditions with long-term temporary or varying effects, which may or may not be apparent. Generally, you do not need to tell the OAC what your disability is, 
but rather tell us which barriers you face in accessing and how that can be removed in terms of getting the assistance that you need. Um, we want to really thank you uh, to all of you for making the time to attend today's session. For more information in terms of what's been discussed today, please do visit the OAC website at www.arts.on.ca. We are going to move on now to answering some of the questions we received prior to today's session. And we'll try to get to as many questions as possible that have been submitted by you today. If we don't get to your questions, feel free to send an email to communications at arts.on.ca or contact the program staff. On a final note before we turn to some of your questions, um, please know that OEC staff are on your side. We want you to succeed. Most of us have been artists or have worked in the arts prior to our time at the OEC. And many, us, many of us have been applicants as well. So know that we like helping you out. Um, do give us some time to be able to do so to assist you. Email us your questions and we'll do our best to answer them thoroughly. There is usually a contact person listed on the program webpage and that's either a program administrator or a program officer or sometimes both. They're your first point of contact for questions about a particular program. If you're not sure which program to look for, go to the Contact Us page on our website and you can look for contacts by discipline. You can also call our main phone line. Olga, who is our receptionist, is answering calls and we'll be able to direct you to the person you need to speak with. And even if you receive some bad news um, that you didn't get a grant this time around, know that programs are extremely competitive and to give it another try and don't give up. So thank you for that. So we'll move on to our question and answer section. Okay. Um, this is Emily here. Uh, so thanks to everyone who submitted questions uh, when they registered and also I see lots of questions popping up uh, during the presentation. We actually received hundreds of questions so we will not be able to get to all of them today um, and hopefully the presentation covered a lot of what you were asking about. Um, and there is a bit of overlap in some of the questions we received. So what I'll do is I'll paraphrase some of the questions that we received um, and pose them to the panelists. And again, as they mentioned, if you if we don't get to your question today, please send us an email at communications at arts.on.ca um, or contact the program staff uh, for the program you're interested in. Okay, um, so our first question is about the language that's used in applications. What is the preferred tone of language and how formal does it have to be? Should we be using buzzwords or lingo in our applications? I'll take that one. So um, uh, we would say that clear and concise language is better than overly formal uh, language and gar jargon. Uh, it's important to note that it's, it, uh, it, uh, there are other artists uh, uh, not, and not bureaucrats that are uh, assessing your applications. So you want to be speaking directly to them. Uh, not all assessors are going to be familiar with your work or the discipline that you work with in. So if there are specialized terms or technical language or culturally specific language that you need to use, um, uh, you might want to ex use, ex use those to uh, explain uh, what it is that you're doing and to give the context of uh, what these terms may mean. Um, because there are so many applications for assessors to meet, uh, read, try to make it easy for them and to understand, uh, for them to understand what you're doing and why. But, you know, be yourself, use your uh, authentic voice, use, you know, speak in the first person, be yourself. Okay. Let me just pull up my questions again. All right. Um, as an artist with a disability, are my chances of being funded lessened if my work is not about my disability? More broadly, if I belong to a priority group, does my work have to be about my identity in order to increase my chances of being funded? 
So I'll take this one as well. I would say that your work doesn't have to center on your disability or your cultural identity or where you live in the province for that matter. Depending on your current preoccupations or a specific uh, a project, it may or may not, uh, it may or may not. <laughs> So, however, uh, it may be helpful to at least say, as someone with a disability, these are my interests and pre preoccupations. It's also important to recognize that at least within the context of the disability arts programs, you're being assessed by other artists with lived experience of disability. So you should feel comfortable in speaking directly to them. Uh, with limited funding, of, uh, a disability arts panel may want to privilege projects that are disability related or that, ha or that advance disability arts practice in some way. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you won't, they won't support activity that isn't disability related. Okay. Can my project be funded if I intend to do the project in a language other than English or French? I guess I'll answer that one too. <laughs> but they do feel free to jump in at any point. Um, in most cases, yes, OEC does have programs that are language specific, such as uh, English uh, literature and theater and conversely Francophone literature and theater programs. However, for programs that are not language specific like music creation projects or media artist creation projects, as well as dance, visual arts, craft, indigenous arts projects, your project can be um, in another uh, language. Your application, however, um, must be submitted in either English or French. Uh, it might be helpful to have support material in English or French so that assessors can understand your work, and for example, subtitling. Um, and the program webpage will tell you whether the program is specific to English or French or not. Uh, the album we mentioned earlier uh, by Lido Pimiento, uh, Pimiento, for example, was largely in Spanish. So that's an example of a funded project, not in English or French. Okay. Um, and we also have some people asking if it's possible to see examples of past uh, applications that have been successful uh, or projects that were successfully funded. Mm -hmm. So to see who's funded, you can go to the OAC website and um, you can look on the grants results page and for the program that you're interested in. And the page will show you the names of the recipients and the amount that they received. It's also a good place to look to see how many applications are received and how many we were able to fund for that deadline. Um, the applications themselves are private. It's up to the artist who, um, who applied, um, whether they're willing to show their project to the world. Uh, funded artists must acknowledge the OAC publicly when they present their work so that you can find OAC funded projects by looking up hashtags like hashtag OAC funded. And the OAC has a few examples of funded projects and organizations on the website homepage where it says investing in the arts has uh, a ripple effect. Okay, um, how do I convince the assessors of the urgency of receiving a grant? So um, it's important to know that uh, OAC grants are not be awarded based on financial need. And unfortunately, there's no way to speed up the uh, awarding uh, the assessment process. Um, in the recent Arts Response Initiative program, applicants could talk about the need to adapt their practice in terms of the pandemic, but this was a, a fairly exceptional case uh, in exceptional circumstances. Um, OEC grants are not emergency grants. You can definitely talk about the importance or meaning of the project, the impact it's gonna have um, in your application, speak from the heart when you talk about your plans, tell assessors what the project means to you and why you're the person to, do be, to be doing this project and now. Um, and uh, that will, you know, really is important to address, especially in the impact uh, uh, questions. Um, but, you know, we do hold uh, artistic merit and uh, artistic merit impact and viability in equal balance. So the impact of the grant is significant, but we also want to make sure that it has merit and that um, that it's it's also very it's also viable. Work that's being supported for impact only, without consideration of merit, 
um, unfortunately won't uh, necessarily uh, do very well. And we're supporting artists in their artistic careers. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and this one's a bit of a, a heartbreaker. I know that this happens. Um, this question is, although I got positive feedback about my application after I was unsuccessful twice in getting a grant, what am I doing wrong and do I need to hire a grant writer? We certainly know that um, this can be really discouraging and um, potentially even baffling to you um, if you got good feedback. Um, it's really important to understand that um, as we mentioned earlier, we receive lots of great applications and that um, there's sometimes just not enough money to fund all the applications that we receive. Certainly demand um, really exceeds the, the funding available. Um, one example is an artist who's um, applied um, a number of times to the Skills and Career Development Program. Um, first time unsuccessful, asked for feedback. Um, and that they incorporated the feedback and the second application was pretty flawless, but they were still unsuccessful. The third time they applied with no changes and were the top ranked proposal. So in terms of hiring a grant writer, this is not a guarantee that you'll get a grant. Uh, a grant writer's application is still competing against all the other amazing applications received at the deadline. Um, if you struggle with putting your ideas down, a grant writer may be helpful, um, but ultimately you're still competing against many, many excellent projects. Um, if you do have a disability and require assistance completing your application, um, do get in touch with the OEC to apply for application support to help you offset those costs. Uh, do you have any grant programs for artists over the age of 65? We currently do not have um, programs that are specifically for people aged um, 65 or older. Um, that is not to say that you're not eligible to apply to our programs. Um, they will still be competitive as ever. Um, assessors do not know your age unless you say that in your application. So it's really up to you um, on how you want to characterize your age as being a barrier or how your age impacts your work thematically or otherwise. Okay, if I receive a grant, can I write it off as a tax break? So grants are considered income. If you grant, get a grant of more than $500, you will receive a T4A for that amount, and that will need to be reported as income to the CRA when you file your taxes. Okay, um, what's the difference between Canada Council for the Arts grants and OAC grants, and can I apply to both? So Canada Council for the Arts is a federal entity and OAC operates completely separately from Canada Council um, on the provincial level. If you have a big project, for example, where you need more than one source of funding, you can apply to both the Canada Council and the OAC for grants for the same project. Your application to the OAC um, you'll need to show all of your sources of revenue in the budget form. So you can put in the expected um, or projected grants amount from the Canada Council. Um, always a bonus if you already know the results of um, another grant um, application at the time that you apply to the OAC. If you want to apply to both programs at the same time to maximize your chances of a grant, um, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. When you complete your final report for your project, um, you'll need to su um, submit a confirmed budget with your actual expenses um, and also with your revenue to reflect all of your um, different um, funding sources. And are, are rolling deadlines possible? 
so most programs operate with strict deadlines. Um, in the four recommender programs mentioned, uh, the recommenders set their own deadlines. So you need to ask at their specific, uh, um, need to look at their specific deadlines to know when to submit your application. In rare cases, uh, there are open deadlines where assessment happens every few months. Uh, one example is the, um, One example was the Market Developed Travel Assistance Program, but that, that's currently suspended because the OAC is not uh, supporting travel during the pandemic. Okay, um, quite a few people had questions about uh, supporting film projects and other media arts activities. Uh, so we received questions like, does OAC fund projects for television? Does OAC fund screenwriting? Does OAC fund video game development? And do I have to film in Ontario? Can you talk about, I know that this is a very program uh, specific question. And so it's always a good idea to look at the, the program pages to see what is eligible. Um, but maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Okay. So the OAC, uh, the Ontario Arts Council has a program called Media Artists Creation Projects, which supports production and post-production costs for independent media arts projects, which could be uh, short or feature length films, audiovisual installations, virtual reality um, projects, sound art, new media, electronic or video games. This is a really high demand program. So there are parameters and restrictions drawn around what can be funded, which means there are some types of media art or film projects that aren't eligible. Things like calling card films, uh, projects intended for TV, web series and podcasts are not uh, funded through this program. Pre-production costs like screenwriting or research are also uh, not covered by this program. If you're applying for development of a video game, the priority is to fund projects uh, that have an artistic intent or concept. It's not just about how good the graphics or the visual art of the game is. The program's aim is to support independent works that are ready for production or already on their way, which do not have other sources of funding like broadcasters or Ontario Creates for larger scale projects. Um, and just about uh, the, in terms of a project taking place in Ontario, uh, I believe for this program, you don't necessarily have to film in Ontario. Uh, sometimes the project itself will involve other locations if you're making a documentary about a particular place or uh, in a particular context, that's, you just have to explain that in your application. Uh, and the same thing for working with people outside of Ontario some pro programs will uh, specify that you that the pro project has to take place in Ontario, but it, it really depends on the design of the program. Um, and so, I mean, as the Ontario Arts Council, we want to support Ontario artists as much as possible. Um, but uh, so just explain the context in your application and make sure that you look at the eligibility uh, details on the program page. Um, Okay, so our next question uh, or assembly of questions is about visual arts. Um, we received questions like, can photographers apply to OAC for grants? Um, and what happens if my work falls between different disciplines like visual art, sculpture, installation, and craft? Uh, what programs should I apply to or look at? So you can certainly think about the type of project you want to do and um, read the program pages to see what activities and expenses are eligible. Um, photography is um, generally eligible in the visual arts. So if you have a new body of work that you want to create, um, you can consider, for example, the Visual Artist Creation Projects Program. Um, there are also um, other activities related to that such as the presentation of your photography um, in terms of expenses that you might have for an upcoming um, exhibition, for example. We also have the exhibition assistance program, um, which support um, expenses when, um, when artists are preparing to show their work to an audience. Um, one difference you might consider 
in terms of eligibility is um, the specific goal or concept that you have in mind. Um, in terms of photography, certainly if you're looking to create more work, look at the creation, um, creation projects program and um, see if that offers you um, uh, potentially in terms of eligibility, the, the key support that you need for your particular activity. Um, you also mentioned in the question in terms of different types of work um, and applying to CRAP. So if you work in a number of different disciplines, you can think about whether your project might be a fit in a program that is um, supporting multiple, uh, multiple disciplines like multi and inter arts, for example. In terms of craft and um, visual arts programs, we do sometimes have artists that go back and forth between the two programs, um, depending on the specific project that they have in mind. Um, I would certainly say, again, look at the program pages. And um, when a project is eligible in more than one program, uh, you're welcome to contact the program staff to have a discussion, but one of the suggestions that um, I sometimes give to applicants is think about the um, assessors that will be at the table um, reviewing projects for that um, particular program. So in a craft program, um, projects are reviewed by a full panel of craft artists and then in a visual artist program, a full panel of visual arts um, assessors. Um, but we certainly have programs that support the creation portion for both craft and visual artists and uh, program staff are available to help you figure out which is the best fit for the project that you want to do. So please do reach out to us if you have questions. Um, okay, our next question, we received uh, some questions about research. Uh, so what programs are available for research? Um, I think is this is mainly dependent on the program you apply to. Uh, but can you talk about what's available for research in the artistic practice? Yeah, so, so it depends on the discipline uh, you're working in and what programs are available to support the project. So published writers can apply to literary creation projects, works in publication, which can cover research expenses in craft projects. You can apply to do research into your craft discipline. In dance projects, uh, there's a category for development of new dance works. So there could be research involved in developing uh, new choreography. So start reading some of the program pages or email us or tell us about the project that you want to do and we can point you in the right direction. Okay. Um, so we've also received tons of questions in the Q&A uh, today. Um, so I'll put forward a few of those. Uh, do you fund students or do you have grants for tuition costs? So we don't fund uh, uh, individuals who are in, uh, enrolled in post-secondary uh, education. Um, so, and we don't cover uh, tuition costs, uh, full-time um, enrollment in, in school. Um, you can look to OSAP and other sources of funding for that. Um, in, there are one or two programs where if you are in, in enrolled in a post, um, a master's program or a PhD program, for example, and your artistic pro uh, um, practice is not related to your course of study um, where you can apply. But I would say, look at the program, um, the, the web pages for the program that you wish to apply to and then read, read the um, eligibility re uh, requirements and also uh, look at what's eligible and not eligible. Um, a few people had questions about uh, what it means to be a professional artist um, and how we can show that in our applications. Um, so is it based on our CV? What are you looking for? Or what are the assessors looking for um, to show that evidence of being a professional artist? 
and how would um, an ad hoc group or a collective show that they're professional artists involved in the project? So yes, in, in many ways you've, you've answered your question. It, it is, um, we're, we are gonna be looking at your CV and what it is that you've, uh, that you've uh, done uh, and also looking at uh, the artistic examples that you've uh, submitted. So you have to have a body of work that you can uh, uh, show in support of your work. Um, I'm gonna ask Faye to, look, to talk specifically, for example, about the visual arts um, program and eligibility, eligibility there. Sure, thanks Boshrep. Um, so similar to what Boshrep mentioned, um, in terms of support documentation that you provide with your application is really helpful. So the visual artist program, for example, looks at years of public presentation. So opportunities that you've had to show your work um, to community or to audiences. Um, so we look at in the program years of professional practice not all programs have career stages, but in the visual artist program, for example, we distinguish um, emerging artists um, and mid-career artists, as well as established artists based on years of professional practice. So I would say overall though, generally your resume or CV is helpful to understand um, your interaction or engagement with communities and opportunities that you've had to share your share your work with an audience. Okay, um, we also had a few questions about uh, peer assessment and how peer assessors are chosen uh, or selected for panels. And is there a way um, that an artist can put themselves forward to be a peer assessor? Yeah, so that's a, an excellent question. And we are always looking for new people, um, looking for, for assessors. And we um, make a commitment to always be using uh, new, bringing new, new uh, voices to the table. So it is possible for you to um, apply uh, the, uh, on the web, OEC website to put yourself forward um, as an assessor. Um, as well uh, as we're reading applications and we're, we're also, um, you know, or I know we're a little bit restricted now, but often uh, program officers are, are paying attention to uh, who's out there, who's making work. And we're, uh, because we're always trying to put together panels, we're generally looking, for, we're looking for people who have some uh, knowledge and expertise of their, uh, in built up through their practice of um, both the discipline and of, uh, of community. We're looking for, for people who are uh, generous and, and uh, open-minded to contribute to the process. But if you feel that um, you'd like to put yourself forward by all means, uh, we welcome that. And usually, you know, if, for example, if it's, a, if it's a, say, a visual arts program, everybody at that table has some, um, has a visual arts practice in some capacity. So maybe she'll have somebody that's, you know, f has a, f uh, is a photographer and somebody else who might have a sculptural practice. Um, if you're, if it's a multidisciplinary program, then the assess, you might have a range of assessors. You might have, uh, you know, several people around the table, somebody from a dance discipline, somebody from theater, somebody from li literature, somebody from media and visual arts. Um, if it's a disability arts panel, everybody uh, at that table has a lived experience of disability. If it's an Indigenous arts programs, everybody at that table um, is an, an, an Indigenous artist. Okay, um, can you please clarify uh, what the difference is between emerging, mid-career and established artists and how many years of experience do you recommend uh, for each stage of an artistic career. And uh, if I can add on another question that came up um, about how long you have to wait after you graduate um, before you can apply to OAC. Okay, it's also a great one for Faye. <laughs> sure, um, I can speak to that. I'll mention um, that it may vary by program because in some programs we don't actually necessarily have distinguished 
um, career stages in terms of emerging mid-career and establish. In the visual artist program, I'll note that uh, we say for emerging artists, it's um, three years of practice or more. Mid-career is eight years or more, and then established is 15 years or more, but that may vary um, by the program that you're looking at. We don't generally have a standard time frame in which um, you're required to wait after you graduate. So in many cases, we see applicants apply right away um, to, uh, to a program after their graduation. I'll note too is that we're sometimes seeing a um, significant number of artists who may be going back to school as well um, at a later career stage um, for a variety of reasons. And um, a, a related question I get to that is um, whether they need to wait a certain amount of time um, after they graduate, let's say from a master's program or what does that mean for the experiences that they've already accumulated um, so generally, we don't have a reset. So any experience that you're continuing to have um, within the span of your career, um, and if you've gone back to school in particular at a later career stage, um, the, the years that you may have had prior to that time is, um, is still relevant. And we don't have a particular time frame that you need to wait um, after, uh, after you've graduated from a program. Okay, a few more questions. So many more questions. <laughs> we'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, okay, if you apply for the full grant amount, does this reduce your chances of getting a grant? Or will the assessors only get award part of the grant if there's not enough money? I would say apply for what it is that you need and base your request on your realistic project costs. So start with your expenses. What is it you know, gonna cost me? You know, if I'm in terms of material costs, you know, equipment costs, space rental, you know, if I'm taking courses or workshops, what is, you know, what are the costs asked for a realistic budget? And uh, in, it, you're, you're not, unless there are programs that have a fixed uh, amount, uh, for example, in visual arts, there are fixed amounts based on um, what stage you're, of career that you're that you are, but uh, in other programs, uh, activity grants, um, it, de it depends on the program. Um, there may not, and we'll say, say right in the guidelines, you may not be guaranteed the full amount of funding, um, but I would say make sure that it, you've got a realistic uh, budget and, and uh, the clear and include budget notes uh, that are shows that, you know, that you're asking for what it is that you need um, and then that's more likely to influence what you'll be awarded. But as we mentioned, there's not enough funding to award all of the um, eligible or worthwhile activity. So it depends, sometimes this, uh, panels will want to fund as much activity as possible. And so you might receive a little bit less than you, what you're, you've asked for, but you're never going to receive uh, so little that you wouldn't, won't be able to accomplish uh, your goals. Okay, um, someone wanted, uh, had more questions about the, when you were talking about collaborators, um, the who, what, when, and why. Mm -hmm. um, this, I think this relates back to when we were talking about the grant writing tips. Um, so, oh, okay. Okay. yeah, do, can you go over a bit more detail about what um, collaborators? Yeah, so they might be just uh, uh, other artists that you're working with on your project, for example, right? So, um, you know, you're a collective of artists and you are looking to uh, be mentored by, uh, you're a media arts collective and you're looking to be mentored by an, uh, an established director. So, um, all, you know, the, the various artists on the, or, and you might be bringing in other, um, other individuals to um, consult with on your project or work with on your project. So that's what I, I meant by collaborators. Um, okay, uh, there were also some questions about um, the project timelines and how to determine 
your project timeline and what happens if you don't complete your project within the time period that you said you would? So in, I would say in circumstances, if you've put forward um, and we understand that it's a projection, uh, a time frame for your project and you don't complete it or you anticipate that you'll need more time, um, you can certainly get in touch with us to request an extension. And we have um, a new function in our grant system in which you are able to put forward a request for extending your project. Um, we spoke to earlier, there's a, a two year time frame in which um, applicants have to complete their project. And um, I would say majority of time, we do see grant, um, grant projects completed um, within that time frame. In terms of trying to um, set up your work plan for your application, um, I mean, within that two year window, it really becomes, um, I would say, the, the project itself or the priorities of the project and what the applicants see as necessary um, in terms of um, the particular aspect or phase of the project that you're applying for funding for what you need. So it's really up to you to determine that um, within, uh, within the time frame that um, you feel is uh, required to, to complete your activities. Okie doke. Um, okay, just trying to like lump together some questions here because some of them overlap. Uh, I guess, are you able to talk a bit more about budget? Um, what if there are budget questions that you're not able to answer in your application? Um, and how can you get support on figuring out your budget for your project? So I think you can always call and ask us, you know, your, you know, specific questions that you have. But um, I would often say, um, and if I didn't say this already, <laughs> start with your budget, right? So, uh, you know, determining what it is that, you know, that you're going to, that you're hoping to do with your project, and then trying to kind of do a little bit of research about what things are going to cost, right? So, um, um, in one of the programs I'm managing, I'm thinking about, um, uh, it, it's a program that supports uh, skills and career development for Indigenous artists and artists of color. And uh, people are applying to do all kinds of professional development activity. And the projects might be multifaceted. So they might be taking some courses and some workshops. They might be wanting to pursue a mentorship with somebody. They might want to be doing some documentation of their work. So kind of break it down for yourself, right? If you want to take three courses, then what do they cost, right? So one course is 500, the other one is 600. One of them is 800 bucks, right? List those costs. Uh, you want to work with a particular mentor and you're hoping that you can meet with them every other week for, for four hours, uh, you know, over the course of four months. So you want to talk to that person, find out what their hourly rate is. If they charge you $100 an hour, then you know that each time I meet with them, then that's $400. And if I want to work meet with them twice a month, then that's $800. And if I want to work meet with them for four, uh, four months, that's $3,200 there, right? $3,200, then we've got our $1,000 in our, sorry, $2,000 in our tuition, that's already $5,200 there, right? Um, if there are some materials that I want to uh, purchase, how much are those materials? If there's qu equipment I want to uh, rent. So add up all of the, the costs of everything. And then also you want to pay yourself um, for some of the time that you're taking away from perhaps paid employment to work on your project, right? So you're going to determine what you're going to pay yourself. Say you're paying yourself, you know, $50 an hour, then uh, you know, so then immediate, right away, you're going to taught up your project budget and you know that you can ask for $10,000. So say your overall project costs a budget when you've done your ideal project that you'd like to accomplish, uh, the, the costs come to $12,000. So now you've got to make a decision because you know that you can ask for $10,000. Where's the extra two grand coming from? 
Is that coming? Are you going to put, are you in a position to put that money in yourself? No, you're not. Okay. So are you going to be applying to another funding uh, body, the Toronto Arts Council, the Canada Council, et cetera, for funding? Uh, or uh, are you going to perhaps do some crowdfunding? Or perhaps you're going to look and say, you know what, I'm going to scale back my project now. So I'm going to maybe just apply to take two courses, or maybe I'm only going to be able to work with a mentor for um, instead of uh, four months for three and a half months. So that it's, you know, that's when you start to make those kinds of decisions, you know, that, the, that allow you to come to a balanced, balanced budget where the expenses and the, um, and the revenue where you can get this, you know, where you're going to, your sources of revenue sort of, um, when you subtract one from the other, come to zero. And Faye and, and Emily, if you feel like I've, I've left anything out, do you feel free to jump in? I mean, budgets are, can be intimidating, but I think it's, it's just that. You look at your expenses, look how much you, know, you want, or look at what it will cost to do the project as you envision it, start there, and then see what funding is available from OAC or beyond. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be overly complicated, although I know it feels very, very intimidating. It can be intimidating, but I think mm -hmm. if you start with, if you start there and you, um, you know, just try to break it down step by step, it can become uh, less, less intimidating. Um, another question we had about the application uh, form itself is about artist statements. Um, can you provide some tips uh, about the question where it asks, tell us about your overall artistic work? Um, and then the writing tip in the application form says, write a concise artist statement. Um, can you talk a bit about what OAC and the assessors will be looking for in the artist uh, statement? Sure, I would say that this is a really good opportunity for you to share your context for the assessors to get to know you and understand a little bit about who you are as an artist at this particular moment. Um, it's um, information that um, we think is helpful to before they get into the details of your project description or your artistic examples um, for them to understand what's important to you um, when you, you're uh, conceptualizing your work or thinking about your work um, that help them um, situate your project and your overall artistic practice. Um, and we do recognize that there are word limits um, for, um, for each of our questions, but as Busha mentioned earlier in terms of the writing tips, um, if you're putting yourself at the table, um, recognize that jurors are reading many, many applications all at the same time. So a concise and clear statement about um, uh, who you are as an artist at the moment and what you think is important to really help them understand um, your work and what's meaningful to you, what's important to you, what influences you, um, as, you um, as you make your work. I think all those are um, helpful aspects so that they can have that context for your practice. Uh we had a question about, uh, does OAC provide grants for arts related small businesses? Is there a way that we can sort of clarify um, the difference between an artistic, like a professional artistic practice versus uh, like a business oriented practice or like a, a small business or a commercial practice? Well, I think it's, um, and it may vary if we're talking about organizations versus, uh, versus individuals, but if we're talking about individual practices, um, I think we recognize um, certainly at the OAC that in many cases, artists are balancing um, multiple things. So your artistic practice may have a commercial aspect to it in that the work you make um, um, may have a commercial life after you make the work, for example, it may be shown in a commercial context or uh, sold at some point. Um, so um, I would say from my perspective, the commercial aspect in itself um, isn't necessarily something that we prioritize within our programs. 
Um, however, we understand that um, there is a commercial aspect to making um, a practice work in terms of needing to gen generate revenue. Um, if we were to look at the context of our programs, I think each program um, will have priorities as su supporting strong work um, in terms of, we spoke to earlier, artistic merit, impact, and viability. Um, so while our programs don't necessarily um, specifically support the commercial aspect of your work, um, the fact that it may have uh, a commercial component at some point later on, um, it doesn't necessarily prevent you for, um, from applying to the OAC. It's, I would say, just um, not a priority in terms of what, um, what we tend to look for or prioritize in terms of our support through our project programs. Bosha, do you have any thoughts on that? Anything that you want to add? I think you've, I think you've given a good response. All right, we've got some time for a few more questions. Um, do you recommend getting personal in applications, talking about your journey as an artist, uh, the limitations or missteps or negative experience you've had? Um, is this sort of a tactic that, that people would use in their applications? I would say to, um... There's no expectation that you share what you do not feel comfortable sharing, right? But at the same time, do you feel um, like you feel free to tell your story, right? Um, I think because we, you know, live in a in a very sort of social media <laughs> world where everybody's sharing everything, so sometimes people feel that there's that's an ex there's an expectation for you to kind of bare your soul. Um, it's possible to speak about your work and your artistic practice with that, with, with, and share what you feel comfortable um, sharing. Um, so, you know, it's important to speak about um, your formation as an artist. Um, I think uh, to talk about the things that influence your work, uh, to talk about any gaps along the way, that's perfectly fine to speak about, but I would always try to cast things maybe in a, in a positive light, um, and rather than um, perhaps a, comp a complaining tone, because sometimes that can, can come, you know, it's a balance and sometimes that can come across as, um, yeah, uh, just try to err on the side of, of being positive about your, about your journey, but, you know, forthright and honest. And as, as, as we've said already, the assessors are other artists just like yourself. So, um, think about what would appeal to you yourself if you were reading this particular application. Uh, uh, if you can try to distance yourself a little bit, uh, maybe have somebody else read your application. Um, what would be the kinds of things that you would want to hear? All right. Um, we have a, a, a question that might be, you know, um, deceptively simple, but perhaps complex at the same time, what is the definition of a project? So how would people start to shape, you know, this, this sort of parameters of their project? That's interesting, uh, Emily, I think. <laughs> See, it's complex and simple. simple yeah. <laughs> is, um, is a good way to put it. Um, and I would say um, there's a couple of different ways to approach it. Um, one way that I might suggest is to think about um, if you're an applicant trying to decide what to apply for at the moment, and you might have multiple ideas on the go, is that um, I would suggest thinking about what excites you the most and what you feel is really important and compelling to, um, to take on at this particular um, moment in your career and um, start to kind of hone in on that and that becomes the project um, in a way that um, you'll then have to find the appropriate fit for the grant program and the grant program will have specific um, eligibility criteria that state um, what it does and does not fund 
So sometimes those um, uh, eligibility criteria components might um, help you put some parameters about um, what you particularly put into your application to request for funding. So that's yet another way to approach it is if you have many different ideas and you're not sure, you might look at a particular program and for example, it might specifically fund an aspect of um, that's about community engagement and based on what you can ask for support for in terms of eligible expenses, that might put some parameters around your project. But generally I would recommend, you know, go with what you are really compelled to do and um, have a lot of passion for at the moment and then key in on what those ideas are. And then that will really, um, I would say, drive you in terms of, I think, um, coming up then with a description of the particular set of activities or an initiative that you might want to come to the OAC for in terms of grant support. Mm -hmm. It might look like an exhibition or, you know, uh, play or it might, you know, depending on what dis discipline or your art practice is, it, it may take on a specific uh, shape. And I think in some cases, you can also look at the program page to see what categories are available, uh, because that can help you say, you know, for dance projects, for example, um, you can apply for the development of choreography, but then, so you do the development of the dance as a project in itself. And then perhaps a year from now, you want to present that work, you know, hopefully after this pandemic, but <laughs> but you could would then be able, that could be a separate project. Whereas right now you're just applying for the for the work to create create the work. Okay, um, let's just get in a, a last little uh, question here. Um, about uh, visual arts, um, can things, do you have to have an exhibition venue secured in order to apply for a series of work? And can studio rentals and things like that be included in your grant application? Um, good question. So uh, for the creation program, uh, no, you do not have to have um, a presentation secured. Um, so the creation program is specifically really focused on expenses that an artist may need to make the work. So studio rental is um, absolutely eligible materials and supplies, um, artist fee to yourself for your time to make the work. Um, those are all eligible components and um, presentation is not required um, because that's a phase that's um, not supported in the creation um, projects program. Um, in a program like exhibition assistance where we do focus on um, covering expenses for a presentation, um, that program would require um, a confirmation of a presentation opportunity, um, but it's not required in, um, in the creation program. Okay, um, I know it's uh, it's now 4.30, so we've reached the end of our time, but there are still, unfortunately, a lot of questions that didn't get answered in uh, today's discussion. But uh, as we said, uh, please contact um, communications at arts.on.ca um, or get in touch with program staff and we'll do the best we can to answer your questions. Thanks all for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.